Hi, my name is Taylor with Dog on Problems, and this is Nala, and Ella is hiding over here on the couch. They're both rescues, uh, which we love. Um, and this is their roadmap to success. So today I got to meet them, and I found out that they have a neighbor that they like to not fight with, but get excited with on both sides, on the sides of the fence. Um, and there was a few other things that we worked on as well, but that was the main issue. Uh, but we went, obviously, through the normal route of things the first thing we talked about today was exercise they're already getting a lot of exercise which is great keep up what you're doing um they go on walks they get to sniff while they're on the walks that's excellent um they play fetch in the yard um they're already getting a good amount of stimulation but let's ramp that up a little bit today we talked about food dispensing toys um one of the ones that my dog really likes is a snuffle mat it's about the size of a place mat it's got fleece tassels on it similar to the blanket that i'm sitting on you pour the food onto the snuffle mat, work the food into the mat, and then that's they have to move the tassel, eat the food, move the tassel, eat the food. Uh, that's very stimulating for them. Their nose controls around 60% of their brain, so that's one way you can take advantage of it. The next thing we talked, or another food dispensing toys, toy that I like is the Omega Paw Treat Dispensing Ball. It's an orange ball, it has a sleeve that you can drop the treats into. They have to nudge it just the perfect with the perfect amount of intensity and speed to get the food to fall out. And so that's a really great one because you can't necessarily figure it out. Those are my favorite food dispensing toys, the ones that they can't necessarily figure out. Um, I also mentioned scent games to you, Google that. Uh, it's a fun game, you can play with them to burn energy inside without having to leave. So when you are here studying, you can hide the treats around, play the game with them, burn energy. Um, I also talked to you about how I feed Luca. I feed one of his meals each day out of the snuffle mat and two food dispensing toys and it takes him quite a while to finish his food. That might be something for you to explore, um, but work with what you can in the beginning and keep adding on new things as you keep moving forward. Um, we talked about rules. So with rules, remember that breaking a rule for the dogs is very confusing. Rewarding them by breaking it, I mean, is very confusing. The rules that we talked about need to be in place for three months or as long as your problems are going on. So if your problems are lasting longer than the three month window, keep the rules in place until after then. Um, the first rule we talked about, which I'm glad you're on board with, most people look at me like I'm nuts, uh, is no furniture. The reason why is dogs view the world in terms of height or social status, so we want to take away that social status. You should be in the leadership position, so sitting on the couches, they should be in the follower position on the ground. You already have two dog beds, which they use, and that's excellent. Um, we want to make sure that anytime we take the furniture away from the dogs, that they have a comfortable place to go to of their own. Um, we talked about the kitchen. We went over a boundaries exercise to keep them out of the kitchen. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to get that baby gate so you can block off one of the entryways to your kitchen so that you're not trying to fight with them. You have two, so it's a little bit more difficult when you're running back and forth to keep two dogs from coming into the kitchen. Um, so what I would do is I'd do two or three days of it in one side, two or three days of it in the other. So that way eventually you can wean the baby gate out and they're getting practice at self-control at both of the entryways to the kitchen. Um, we talked about leashing up for the dogs for your walks. So they have to sit off of the tile in your entryway before you'll grab their leash. Um, do they wear their harnesses all the time? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you go, when you go to leash them up, they have to be off of the tile in your entryway. They have to sit. If they get up from the sit in the process of you reaching for the leash, stop reaching until they sit again. Um, then you want to make sure that they're going to remain sitting while you attach the leash and while you open the door. We want to get them to the point, I walked you through a little bit of how you want to practice them, one, when people come in, and two, when you go on walks. So you want to be able to open the door all of the way before either of them go out the door. So we want it, that's another practice of self-control. Um, let's see. Food. So with feeding, we talked about structured feeding. So we want them to eventually be eating in the order of their rank. So the better behaved dog for the day gets to eat first. Um, at first it's going to be teaching them the word. So for the next three, three to four months, the first bite of food that each of them takes, they should hear a word that means eat for them. So one word for each dog, like I told you, my dog's word is pizza. Um, so every time they take their first bite for that first few months, you're going to say the word. Eventually the word becomes their permission to eat. So, uh, we talked about having to lower the bowl until you can actually get it to the ground. So at first, you're just gonna be lowering it to the ground. The second the bowl hits the ground, they're allowed to eat. Eventually, you want them waiting time. So Luca waits anywhere from one second to five minutes before he's allowed to eat his food. Sometimes it's right in front of him, sometimes it's across the room. But this is another practice at self-control. 
developing self-control is going to be crucially important for them so that they can have the control for themselves when it comes to the fence. Speaking of the fence, we talked about potentially putting up something to block the view of the other dog. It sounds like um, the other the other people that you're dealing with might not be as um, uh, strict about making sure that their dog comes in when this does become an issue. That can help with the visual aspect of it. it sounds like the other dog's jumping the fence. Um, I'm not really sure how we can prevent mm -hmm. that without the other guardians doing something, but we can take away the visual aspect. Like I said, we have habits, they have habits. It takes, a couple, it takes a couple months to break those habits and create new ones. So you'll have to have that visual block up for at least a couple months. I'd probably just leave it there. Um, but that's all obviously entirely up to you. They make the screens that you can put up. They make slats that you can slide into the fence. Um, I'd just go look, they're at like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards. Um, just go look at them and see what you think will work best for you. I think that's gonna be a very safe option for you though as well. Uh, with when they're in the backyard, we talked about, I think you already ordered some of the freeze-dried beef liver. That's going to be the treat that they only get when they come in. That is the highest value treat, and this is your biggest issue right now. So the only time they're getting that reward is when they come inside. Um, as you saw, Nala really liked it. Ella was sitting faster that when she, I was using that, so I think she liked it too. Um, you're going to have to search for other rules that fit your life. Uh, there's going to be things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that are going to you're going to be able to implement some self-control. That's what we're looking for here. We want them to learn how to wait. We want them to learn how to restrain themselves a little bit. Nala's young still, so and they both are. They're both very young dogs. You have a very easy you'll you'll have an easy path going forward. We um, with their recall exercise. She knew what I had immediately, so she just stayed by me. What I was hoping for is I'd walk out into the yard and she was gonna think that we were bringing her in and she'd wander off and do her own thing. What I would have you do is go stand in the middle of your yard when it's a little drier and just stand there with a piece of that in your fist, close your fist tightly so they can't smell it and just stand there. Don't say anything, don't call them to you. Dala will probably keep her distance thinking you're going to bring her inside. Eventually she's going to be like, uh, mom doesn't normally stand in the middle of the yard. She's going to wander to you to see what's going on. When she does, give her the treat and say, come. Now, because of your fence situation right now, you can't go inside. Um, but when, well, I don't know, maybe you can, but I would just come back up to the door or just inside of the door, wait a couple minutes, go back out and do the same thing. You're going to practice that getting closer and closer to your door until you step outside your door. It doesn't take very long until they just start running to mm -hmm. you because they know they're going to get that great reward. That's going to rewire what they think in their head. It's going to take a couple months right now. They think, Oh, mom ends the fun. Now we want to, we want to fix that. We want them to think that coming to you is the fun. Um, we talked about petting today. So the first thing we talked about was having them earn pets versus just being given pets. When you go to pet them, Tell them to sit one time. It's fine. It's okay. just for you. Um, tell them to sit one time. When they sit, or if they sit, they get the attention. If they don't, they get nothing. Playing hard to get works great for dating, and it also works great for dogs. So tell them to sit one time. It's going to be hard at first, but over time, your attention will become very precious, and they're going to come sit down in front of you as a way of prepaying for it. Their prepayment is in a form of obedience. When you pet them, uh, especially for Ella, if all things are equal, petting underneath the chin is going to promote that uh, the head position that we want, so an elevated head position. Um, but you want to make sure that the only time that they're getting any attention, they've sat down to earn it first. That goes for new people as well. I told you about potentially carrying treats or giving the people coming in treats so that they can help her figure out the new behavior that we want, which is sitting to earn the attention from people. When she does nip or mouth you ah! really loud will help stop that. Um, I have a feeling that if she thinks she's hurting you, she's going to stop nipping you. Um, let's see, passive training, passive training, when is rewarding your dog for things that you like, even when you didn't ask for them. So if Nala comes to you, pet her and say, come, she sits down next to you, pet her and say, sit, she lays down, pet her and say, crash or down, whatever your word is. We talked about the off command for furniture. Every time that they get off of the furniture or you nudge them off, say the word off as all four paws are hitting the floor. Same thing when they're jumping up on you. Say the word off as all four paws are hitting the floor. This is gonna passively train them to understand what the word off means. They're not gonna know in the beginning what it means, uh, but over time it will become a command word for them that they'll understand. Uh, we went over that boundaries exercise. We generally don't post those videos um, or do a video over that, but I can send you something uh, that will cover that exercise if you forget how to go through that. Um, let's see. Uh, with the kitchen, I think we already talked. I think I mentioned this, but make sure they're staying out when you're cooking and when you're eating. 
Um, the back door was another rule. So when they do go to go outside, tell them to sit one time. If they sit, they can go out. If not, they have to wait for one minute. After that one minute passes, tell them to sit again. If they sit, they get to go out. But if they don't, now they have to wait for two. Then four, eight, 16, generally doesn't get that far. Um, with the, with the If one of them sits and the other doesn't, let the dog that sat go out, but the dog that didn't doesn't get to go out. They have to wait the amount of time. Um, this we're gonna we're working on. Like I said, we want them to be competing to be obedient rather than competing to be disobedient. Um, anything else? I think I covered everything. I think that was it. Yeah. All right. Uh, you have my number. I think. I know I called you the other day. I think day. yeah. Um, I'll text you again so you have it. But you have my number. Reach out. Uh, save it. Save it with dog on problems in the name, so you can search dog down the road, and you'll be able to find me. You'll probably forget my name, and that's totally mm -hmm. fine. Um, but I want to be a continued resource. So if you run into any roadblocks, please reach out. The only time the only time we ever get mad at, at anybody is for not reaching out. So please reach out if you have any problems. Um, and that's all we got. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. <laughs>